Ah, another vestige of um, the past age that I found is um, also another another tricky one for sure, or at least for for some it is definitely. Um, for me, uh, it took me a, well. First, I'll talk about this. Um, vegetarianism, not eating other animals, and um, basically for me, I've been a vegetarian since uh, June 4th of last year, so about, oh shit, uh, what's today, I don't even know, the second, third, about a year ago, that's funny, uh, very funny, fitting that I guess I would do the video now, but anyways, and I've been a, a, a vegan for the last couple of months, um, I mean I'm not this strictest vegan, but then again, I am sort of changing that to where, you know, even if it's in a cake or something, as much as I love cake and before it wouldn't stop me, I'm starting to shy away from that. And if I have an alternative, I'll definitely avoid milk and eggs. But let alone all that, for me, my understanding of it, it, it comes down to frequency. Um, you know, thought, uplifting, love, consciousness, transcendence, all these things are, are, are very... They all vibrate at a frequency, and, and love, and transcendence, and unity, these things, harmony, vibrate at the highest frequency. And, um, you know, our bodies are, are in tune with frequencies. It is a frequency itself, you know. It's the material plane frequency, the material world, what's tangible, what you can feel. And um, definitely what you put into your body impacts all of your other planes of being, all of your other layers of frequency, your mental capacity, your mental frequency, your emotional frequency, uh, I guess you could say spiritual frequency, or maybe fire plane, I guess you could say, really. Um, and uh, let's face it, man, I mean, logically speaking, if you are eating another animal, it doesn't matter at what, I mean, how that animal is prepared, um, it still is killed, it still is murdered. And I'm not here to make anyone feel guilty or shame. I've never judged anyone, especially after becoming vegetarian and vegan myself. I've never judged anyone um, for their choices. You know, I, I eat meat, um, you know, quite happily, or perhaps quite naively, for many, many years, the vast majority of my years here. And, um, but I definitely have come to the solid conclusion, and I really can't even be around meat or leather that matter now because there's this, this there's such a when that murder occurs there's so much pain in the animal and fear and it's not like the animal is in uh, even the the most um, humanitarian murdering conditions um, it's not like that animal is having a, a picnic and you know oh it's like I'm staying at a hotel five star I, life is wonderful and then you know done and that's in the most ideal circumstances, let alone the fact that there are animals that are just getting butchered and their consciousness is in such a state of fear and, and anxiety and pain that that meat is just irradiated with it. But again, even in the best case scenario, because I've had friends who said, well, I, I um, only eat this kind of meat or this kind of you know, farm fresh eggs or um, free range eggs, for example. And <laughs> Again, they're, they're not saying it for me. I always find, I always observe, they're saying it for themselves, really. They're just trying to justify it, and they still are like, I mean, it doesn't feel quite right, it doesn't click, it doesn't, there's, there's, uh, there's not harmony, there's tension there. And, um, and that's, from my perspective, again, I'm not here to tell anyone that what they're doing is wrong or to judge them, but I'm definitely here to offer my perspective, and, and uh, I'm going to say what it is. Uh, me simply eating it another animal is murder you know I mean, we are here to be in tune with everything and um, you know plants are living things too but not not quite like animals in the sense that animals have a bit more consciousness you know I mean I still I, I really do wonder if our fate as humanity and our evolution is to embrace what I've heard from um, so many cases of uh, Indian spiritual teachers and, and enlightened people and that um, they totally subsist purely on light and on energy from the sun which really sounds you know crazy perhaps to the over rational logical western mind but that's really not crazy considering the sun supports life for an entire solar system and everything on earth even you know moonlight is a reflection of the sun's light if the sun wasn't there first of all we'd all be 
tumbling off into the, the abyss of space um, until another sun, you know, captured us in its gravitational pull. But um, the light would be completely gone. All energy would be completely gone of this solar system, you know. I mean, okay, not completely because there's other solar systems and whatnot, but um, if you took out all of the stars, I don't know how you could do that, but all the stars of the soul of the entire universe were put, um, there would be no life. There would be no light because I mean, right now, this all of this energy is coming from the sun, one way or another. Um, whether, yeah, I mean, uh, I could go into more detail, but we all we all know that to be true. And if you think about it, if you think about even the consumption of fossil fuels and stuff, what is that? That is um, fossils is that lived, breathed, and died under the rays of the sun, and that needed the sun to even exist in the first place. So I do wonder if that is our ultimate evolution. You know, I don't know. I really don't know. You know, maybe we are meant to subsist on plants for, I don't know. I, I have no idea, and I would love to, it's going to be interesting to see. Um, and by the way, I should say that uh, the way that, these uh, yogis basically in, in India subsist is by uh, intaking sun energy in other ways. I've done another video on the Ujjayi breath, which is the um, the solar breath, you know. You know, it's a different kind of breath. You're intaking more energy. Um, as the uh, yogis explain, it's taking in more energy of the sun, more pranayama, you know, uh, literally sun particles, packets of energy. And to underestimate the power of the sun is absolutely naive and illogical because, um, I mean, here we are at one AU from the uh, distance, you know, Earth to the sun, and I, I believe that's about 92, 93 million miles. But um, even astronomical bodies such as Pluto and Neptune, which are, I, I want to say about 25 AU, 30 AU, some, somewhere in that range, 30 times the distance of our our uh, distance from the sun. And beyond that even, the Oort cloud and other, that uh, the sun's influence, the, the heliosphere, literally the, the energy packets, the photons that the sun is emitting, that the, you know, that is the sun, envelops us completely, so much more than our eye can see. Infrared uh, vision is a, good, is a great example of, of a no, whole other spectrum of light, a whole other spectrum of energy that we can't see, you know, and yet is there and we can feel, and yet sometimes we can't even feel because it's on a whole other spectrum that we're not, our senses cannot perceive at this point in time. So, um, that's, that's another vestige of this past age, is trying to conquer nature. Believing this, this, this insane biblical view that, you know, human beings are the center of the universe and that we are here to conquer the earth. No, we are the earth. We are the manifestation of the earth. Everything that is our body, everything that we put on our, our body, everything that we ingest in our body, is all from the earth. Again, we are from the earth. Our parents, our parents, parents our ancestors, back to forever is from the earth and um, we're not here to conquer animals we're not here just to simply feed us and in fact they're not here to feed us at all uh, that's again this is my perspective I think logic and observation backs me up on this you know I haven't yeah, I, I think we all intuitively know it too whatever our reason is for eating meat now is it important to get protein yes um, you know, I've, I've definitely, I've needed to find alternate ways of intake of protein and also vitamin B6 and B12. It's very important if you do issue meat, um, it issue, is that how you say it? If you kick meat out of your diet to get your proteins. But it's not impossible at all. It's very easy, actually. It's incredibly easy. At Walmart, they have the protein powder things for like 18, 15 bucks, something like that. And uh, that thing lasts you for a long time. And it's delicious. They have, like, cookies and cream and fucking strawberry and chocolate and vanilla. It's just like, hmm, damn, this is better than eating meat, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Let alone the whole frequency thing. And again, let's come back to that. The frequency of a dying animal, let alone a dead animal, let alone that animal carcass that you're putting into your system, is going to lower all of your other frequencies. You can't help it. It's, it's, you can't help it, man. It's just interfering too much. How can you be psychic and empathetic with another person when you have rotting corpse in your stomach? You can't, you know, because it's too, you're, 
you 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 try to be empathetic and you're so focused on this that you you're like oh my god that uh, that chicken had so much pain and so much you know you get distracted it's a simple matter of that it lowers your frequencies of thought to get so easily distracted by your body and the the biggest thing and the saddest thing about this is how subconscious all of this is at how you eat meat and then for the next three days, you know, you'll feel, well, I don't know how long, I, I, I don't know how long, but definitely for the next significant span of time, um, it's going to be affecting you, and in ways that you're not even conscious of, even if you're, even after now, if you still eat meat, you know, you'll forget, because people do, we go keep going in our lives, we eat, and then we go do something, and we forgot that, say, we ate meat, you know, and now all of a sudden, why, we don't know why we're not as happy as before and why we can't connect with people as easily before and why we have this strange conquering feeling and also this strange conquered feeling going on in our system and um and so that's why from my perspective we need to in this age respect life for what it is and respect that we are not here to destroy other animals and, and conquer them and eat them um and in fact, when we do that, we are literally destroying ourselves. You know, that is my perspective. I'm not here to make you feel bad. I'm not here to guilt trip you. But I'm going to give you my perspective, always. I can't help it, and I enjoy doing it anyways. <laughs> so, um, it, you know, and just on this note, killing animals too. You know, when I was younger, uh, just like many young boys and human beings in general, we've had this obsession with killing animals insects and all sorts of vermin and you know I mean there are other ways in killing I have found for sure relocation or, or whatever find another way there are other ways and um, you know killing another being it doesn't matter whether it's a cockroach or a boar or an elephant whatever it doesn't matter but especially the insects that for so long we've just taken for granted that we're you know killing and everything those are still lives and um although human life because of uh, our our nervous our essential nervous system I, I this isn't this next line this next revelation isn't me um this is borrowed from um oh what's his name uh the teacher of param paramhansa yogananda um Shuri Yukteswar Giri, I believe is his name, if I'm saying that correctly. But a uh, genius man, and if you read Autobiography of a Yogi by Paramahansa Yogananda, he talks about this. And he said, um, Paramahansa asked him a wonderful question that I've always wondered, you know, is, um, well, if we are equal to animals, is, does that mean that my life is equal to that of a tiger, you know? And in a certain sense, yes, but also in a certain sense, no. Because our central nervous system and our, our evolution has enabled us to be fully conscious. And yes, dolphins are conscious and, and whales are conscious. And who knows, you know, tigers have a central nervous system too. They're, they're certainly conscious on the levels that we can't understand for sure. Definitely. Um, but we should recognize that human beings have evolved to a significant point far beyond that of other animals. As far as we can tell, but really the only thing that comes to mind is dolphins or whales. And um, even then, our technological uh, powers are, are vastly uh, beyond theirs. Unless, of course, there's a whole other society, the dolphin society, you know, deep in the Mariana Trench that we don't know about. Hell, man, who knows? Uh, re reality is fucking crazy, and it's beautiful, and it's chaotic, and surprises will always come and greet us. So who knows? But I do know this, is that we human beings... Are, have a very special system and we've evolved in the eyes of karma and the eyes of past lives we've evolved up through all these different cases for our essence for our spirit our soul and here we are now in a uh, case that is incredible incredible tool and I'm incredibly in tune and has the capability of increasing its um, its harmony of being in tune with the universe and with life and consciousness and um, it's a beautiful thing, and uh, it's definitely something to treat with respect, and it's definitely something to treat to the best of our abilities, you know, to, to, uh, to 
protect in a certain way, you know. Our bodies really are our temples for all of these other processes of what's going on, mental and emotional and spiritual, like I was saying. And um, though these aren't the end-all, be-all, it's an important part of the whole. And so this is why I feel that, uh, you know, we need to get over this past age of, of, of just a lot of confusion and a lot of misguidance in regarding to the body and what we're putting in and yada, 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 and what we're doing with it, killing. And killing is never justified, you know. Um, aggressive killing. I mean, if somebody's coming after you and in self-defense, you're going to, you have to do that to protect yourself. I think that's a different case because ultimately that apparently was meant to happen and if you had to do that to survive, you know. But aggressively going out there and killing something is never justified. Violence is never justified. Absolutely act in self-defense. That's period. Self-defense. 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 So, um, I think that's everything about all that I can think of. So uh, let me know your experiences with all this, your thoughts. I would love to explore that, the, the idea of uh, overcoming our need for, you know, earthly sustenance through our, our communion with light, you know, through pranayama techniques and other stuff. And also, I've also wondered about the overcoming of sleep, because I feel like more and more I'm sleeping less and less, and I feel perfectly fine, and I'm like meditating during the day, at least even a tiny bit, and it, it energizes me. So I wonder where that's leading to, as far as human consciousness. And, I mean, it's so Piscean to sleep and to dream, and, and I think we're getting out of that. So I, I wonder, so I'd love to hear your thoughts on that, because these are some fascinating, fascinating thoughts that really change our paradigm. I want to explore that, you know. So. Namaste. Ghosts.